that song go. I had a friend named Rambling Bob who used to steal gambling rob. Too much he thought he was rob. the smartest guy around. That's Bob. That's why He's Bob. He's in the jailhouse now. Hopefully he can get bailed out and get up here shortly. Going back, as the fellow told me one time, that the criminal mind was far superior to the regular average Joe out here. And my That's why they all politicians again. Well, I, my next question to them is why is the media of them in jail? They must like jail, too. <laughs> That's just the ones they call. That's just the ones they call. The smart ones didn't get caught. If you run for office and get caught, uh, it all gets shoved under the rug. And folks, we need to really uh, keep an eye on our candidates, and, and we need to vote uh, for people like Andy Tillman, who's trying to uh, clear out the backlog. It's it appears that we have we have had a judicial system over the last 15 or 20 years. They just shoves cases up under the rug and files them in the, in the corner somewhere and just lets them sit there instead of adjudicating these cases. We need people in there like uh, Jared Effler, Tillman, uh, and, and I, I'm personally going to endorse uh, Miss Salmons, uh, Salmons, Amanda Salmons. Uh, for session judge. We just need to get some judges in there that'll clear out this backlog and get these cases adjudicated that have been hidden for so long. What's adjudicate mean? That's where they say yay or nay, I reckon. If you want to call in and ask what the word adjudicate means, uh, our number is 562-3557 or 566-1450. You got a lot of them numbers got them right. How about that? That's amazing. Well, if you call R.L. Gibson and Jerry Chadwell and Fred Cole often enough. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Fred Cole, I think he's looking better every week as county mayor. It, I think it's his turn. He's, he's it, get up here and state his position, don't he? Yes, he does. Fred needs to come up here and, and speak to us and tell us uh, what a great county mayor he would be. Out of the entire uh, uh, slate of candidates for county mayor, methinks Fred Cole's the only one working for a living. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of them got government jobs or elected offices. And uh, Fred, even though he does, uh, uh, he, he leans to the left, but he's, you know, Fred could come around. He's having to work for a living, and uh, he's, I think he has a better understanding of, of the business environment and the business community, and uh, I just think Fred uh, might be the man that we need to get up here and, and get him uh, promoted. Well, you know how it is. When they get elected, they forget who their friends are. <laughs> Well, we we get Fred in there, you get some of these liberal platforms going real good. We might not want to be as friend. Well, I tell you what, I'd rather have an above board liberal than an under the table pseudo conservative. Yeah. At you know, least you know where you stand. Exactly. The problem with this county and state and federal government is they do everything off the books. Well, we got a county mayor now that uh, four years ago uh, all you heard come out of his mouth was jobs, jobs, jobs. And he ain't great. Job, he, he spends all his time in Nashville looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> he wants one of them big high dollar jobs down there in a big city. I think when he was state rep he fell in love with Printer's Alley and he wants to go back and be a permanent fixture down there. Gentlemen, gentlemen, the uh, not to be pessimistic about it, <clears throat> but no matter who we elect to any of these offices, they can tell us all sorts of stuff. But coming to make it come to fact, fruition, or whatever, is going to take a whole lot more than what most people think about. And whenever they're talking about jobs, 
if we have to go out here and hire a company to come here and pay all the bills, even, even though it's the federal government that pays a lot of it, it's still our money. It's still the taxpayers. And the whole country's got sucked into this deal where that you start a, a business or a factory manufacturing, and the government will kick in and pay you a certain amount to train people to do the job. Okay, after you get them trained, what you do is you let them go and hire another crew, and then later you hire them back and train them for another position. And what it boils down to is, is we, the taxpayers, end up paying this thing over and over and over. And I would like to have a list of all the companies that have come to our county to look at it as a potential area to place either a factory or their entire company and how many of them left and why they left that would really be interesting uh, you know we've got a great location we've got uh, rail access we've got interstate 75 access I, I'm, I'm going to tend to this well we do have real access but when they look at our political situation and they evaluate our school systems they don't want to bring their families down here and then they when they take a look at our workforce and see that we really do not have a basic labor force here that can be dependable you got a good point there but let me go back to the rail access just because a railroad goes through your county doesn't mean that you have unlimited access to that. Uh, I have personally tried to get a rail connection siding and whatever back years ago. Had an idea to follow through on. Uh, we have two tracks. We have the southern as well as the l &E that comes through here. But it's quite complicated and you got to put a lot of upfront and whatever to get a siding to Pull a rip to pull off. I think you're right there because rugby over there, that little English community they formed over there in uh, Morgan County, collapsed because they could not get a rail siding as you are speaking about. Well, the uh, if you uh, in order to get a siding, turn that bell again. I believe that was love. I, I, believe. Used to, I saw a show one time where. When you heard this bell, that meant she was in love. Yeah. Oh, there was, I yeah. thought it meant an angel yeah. about his wings. I couldn't remember. No, that's a bell. That's uh, not that. I'm busy. Well, I guess it was a bell. It was this a ding dong bell, wasn't it? Yeah. Or dong ding bell. Uh, oh, okay. But in order to get a siding, there's only so many right now that exist. And the sidings right now, in order to, let's say you want to put a siding into use and it's not been used for a while, you have to go in there and upgrade it. you got to bring it up to standard. And I've worked on those two years ago, putting in sidings. And they've got, to, uh, like you put in a siding here, they've got a, a limit to how far the engines will come up on a siding if it's not fit. They'll push cars up in it, but they won't put their engines beyond a certain point. Mm -hmm. It has to be up to grade, you know, up to standard before they'll run their engines out on it. You follow me? Oh, yeah. Exactly. And of course, like in all your cold operations, uh, of course, you can always move a car with another piece of equipment, usually, but most of them park them on an uphill grade, past the tipples or whatever, to where that you could cut a car loose and let it come down to the tipple, and gravity pretty much run most of them. Would pull them downhill. So you don't have to have an engine. That's correct. Yeah, they would, they would push them back in and push them up on a up on a grade and then drop back down. But anyhow. If you uh, have a siding, uh, and of course now what I was considering was bulk and that type of thing, you are allotted a certain period of time with a car to load it or unload it or whatever. And uh, that point on, on they charge you a pretty good demerge on that thing. So there's a lot more to it than just saying, hey, we want a siding in here. Now there was, uh, there was a siding at the old car random place that went in there. They could have probably been updated some or whatever, but once you start building residential and around these places, it's like carborandum. Once it was shut down for that purpose or what they was using it for, uh, and it started to build up residential, you just don't 
get to go in there with anything else residential. Come I mean, think, commercial. On top of what you're talking about, who picked the top of Jellicoe Mountain up there for an industrial park where there's not a, even the possibility of getting a, a rail well, side? You go back and see who owned the land, and then you know who picked. Is well, the, that's see. Since you're talking about rail sightings, if you want companies to come in that have access to rail siding, like the industrial park down there at Clinton, where so many of our citizens drive to work every day, you need to pick an industrial park area where a rail siding would be easily installed or built or created. Well, how would we do but something we, like that? We put an industrial park on top of a mountain. You couldn't get a rail up there. You'd have to have one of them incline railroads to get get a rail car up there. So who was the stupid idiots that picked that place up there on top of the mountain well, I had to for an industrial your, park? These your eight hundred fifty thousand dollar dog houses. You never know. Oh, okay. The the what you're referring to <clears throat> that industrial park is on what we would call either the south or east side of the interstate. Now that railroad goes up through that holler up through what used to be the old Royal, uh, Blue Diamond Royal Blue or whatever mine there and there was a mill in there, a large sawmill at one time and there was a whole lot of rail well, access. They actually have a rail line up there? Yeah, uh, yeah. they load chips oh, right there. The chip mill. That. Yeah, the chip mill uh, is the only industry I know of that's using it at this time, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're still using it. But it, does it go into that industrial park area? No, I've been up there. I've never it seen a rail line in It there. doesn't go into the industrial park. Uh, it runs more on along like old 63 up that way. Uh, what we used to call Block Turley was still the same name. Oh, okay. Well. That's nowhere near the well, you're industrial correct, park up you're, on top of the mountain. You're correct about the elevation. There's a tremendous amount of elevation between. That's when you get the train loaded. you got to head start getting out of there. Gentlemen, let's go back to the other part of it. The industrial, what industry in there would need rail anyhow? Uh, it's a... But our main subject is what businesses are looking for here to come to Campbell County. Why, what are they, what do they search for when they come here? What do they see when they do come and look the place over? Well, they've got a tremendous radio show on uh, WLAF at 4 o'clock every Saturday, and they've got a wonderful internet show at uh, 5 o'clock on Tuesday at uh, Ub TV. Well, folks, when I found out, and we got a train coming through, so we have trains. the radio station has rail access. We have a siding that comes right down to the front door, so yeah. we're in good shape here. Yeah. But, gotta have something but, to all these signals out. But, uh, when uh, when I found out uh, uh, Remington weapons, Remington gun uh, manufacturing, uh, we were talking about was, razor blades. was moving to Alabama, uh, I contacted our county mayor to see if uh, anything had been done on our county's part to get them to come to Campbell County. Uh, he responded, he said, yes. He said, I sent him an email and made a phone call. <clears throat> Well, that do it. Well, now I asked him for a copy of the email and a copy of the phone records where he had contacted them, and he refused to divulge that information. And uh, so, what does that say? And besides, I asked him after he said he sent an email. I said did that you shows. Well answer this new phone? I believe that's that, said red button. That uh, shows that he. Was, uh, yeah, that, that, was that he knew they were moving and really didn't do anything substantial. Hello, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Go right ahead. Thank you. Well, I'm interested in the uh, list of businesses that would relocate to our county here. Uh -huh. And I'd like to know who would provide that list and would it be a matter of public record? That's a, I don't understand don't that either. question. Uh, are you would, would you be referring to businesses that have applied yes. or have come and looked? Have come and looked and have the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, we can check with uh, 
H. L. Martin. Uh, e. L. Uh, e. L. Martin of the uh, Chamber of Commerce. That's you know, the part. same Chamber of Commerce that has no business owners <laughs> as members. Also, the uh, that should be a record with the uh, county mayor. Also, if they've done any tours or anything. Yeah. Well, that's what I was wondering. I'd like to know why they turned Campbell County down. That would be a very good question. Uh, I think you'll be hard, harder pressed to find somebody that came. You really find out why they turned it down. <laughs> the, uh, when Walmart came here, and we're talking way back years ago, it was my understanding that uh, the gentleman that was, in, that was over Walmart, the older man, what was his name? I don't know. But uh, anyhow, Bill Walton. Walton. Uh, well, yeah. Bob, Bob, Bill, Bob. Sam, 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 Bob. Sam Bob. The word is that he came, drove his pickup truck, and came in here and just kind of scouted the place out personally. But now he was sort of a person that uh, did things different than most corporations does. He kind of took it uh, uh, on himself, to, and that way he didn't take nobody else's uh, uh, recommendation, whatever. He just went and looked for himself. And so we need to find out, you know, why uh, people turn us down. They don't want to relocate it here. Uh, is it the schools? Of course, it's our government. We know that. But uh, what other reasons would they have for not wanting to bring their businesses here? I actually think that we don't have a lot of solicitation for, for new industry. We're, we're looking for a lot of retail businesses all the time because they generate uh, sales tax for the local area which is just recycling the same money mostly, but I don't think you'll find that we've had much of a concerted effort to find any actual job creation. I know they all talk that way this time of the year or this cycle of the election, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm like you. I'd like to see some, some paperwork that says we actually took these people out and wined and dined them and said, boy, wouldn't this be a wonderful place to, to build widgets? Exactly. Oh, when, exactly. When, uh, Mr. Beard, our current county mayor, admitted that he knew Remington was moving south, mm -hmm. uh, and he only sent an email and made a phone call, which he could not verify or substantiate. My question then was, if you knew they were moving, why weren't you sitting in their uh, offices on your hands and knees begging them to come to Campbell County? <laughs> and... If they are moving, how many other corporations are moving out of New York and New Rick Jersey Rick went from Texas to California and tried to recruit the whole state. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'd like to see verification of the phone call and email. <laughs> I think that would be good. It sure yeah, that would be very interesting to see if that was even done. Mm -hmm. But for him to even admit he did so little when he knew right. they were moving is an admission that, uh, of course, it's hard to do a whole lot when you spend all your time in Nashville looking for a state job. That's true. Well, thank you so much for uh, speaking to me. I appreciate it very much. Well, thank, thank you for calling. Call Bye now. Mm -hmm. Do you know oh, that was nice. Do you notice the accent? Yeah. She the, relocated sound like. Sound like she she knows what's here. There's she somebody this. sent her an email yeah, or she, made she a phone call to get her to move here. She chose this over other places. I think, you know, maybe she, we need somebody that, uh, we need somebody's recruiting something besides um, retirees. Exactly. Well, it's, it's, good, <laughs> it's good to have the retirees. We, yes, it is. We I have know. a lot of, of the area. The, we have area that, like around the lake, that that's the best use of that property. You don't want to go out and build factories along a shoreline on a lake like Norse. And I'm saying this because Norse doesn't have barge traffic other than there is a little bit of barge work done, but it's not what you would call Where are you going to go on a barge? Down that's, to the dam? Well, that's what I'm saying. We have a ferry that operates about three days a week. There uh, used to have one. I don't know if they've shut it down yet or not. Well, what, what, I'm, what I'm getting to there's all sorts of things that affect the economy of this area, and I'm sure it applies to a lot of the other parts of the country. If we go back maybe 20 years or 30 years in history, well, let's go back to in Vietnam. During the Vietnam War, there was a lot of machine work done in this area for helicopters and war materials or whatever. 
and our small machine shops <clears throat> would bid on work. And they not just for war materials, but they bid on a ton of things that you would never think of. Uh, gadgets and gadgets. And I know one fellow even made the little spinner thing that went on uh, fishing lures. The little thing goes round and round. And all sorts of things. But what I'm getting back to, there's not any product that you produce, I don't care what it is, you have to have a market for it. You've got to have, you can't make it if you can't sell it. And I'm talking about at a profit. But back at that time, we had a lot of small machine shops. Even some of them were just one-man machine shops. Just one person who ran a machine, and he would make parts for about anything well, you do, imaginable. You do realize that those people went out and sought their own market. Right. Yes, sir. They did. And they were here. They were They were already here. They were residents of the county who right. established a business and went and sought their own market. Uh, what we need is some sort of county leadership that seeks a market and a producer, whether they're local or not, and, and just locate here is what we're looking for. If you could get... Right or we need, to, we need to look at more modern type uh, uh, businesses. Like, for instance, a billing center, uh, a phone service center, or... Uh, uh, yeah, that could replace the old shirt factory crew, couldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we, instead of letting those businesses move to India or Singapore or somewhere like that, uh, we should attract those kind of businesses yeah, here. I'll bet you that those people in India, and I'm not knocking them, but... I bet you they don't work any cheaper than we could get people to answer phones here. And yes, we would have to train them a little bit, but at least we could, and I don't mean this to be, well, I'll just say it. At least most of us could understand what they were saying. Uh, I, 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 I mean, I don't know any of those people on the phone that, that don't speak English better than I speak their native language, but one of us needs to do something because I don't know what they're talking about. Well, time. you've got a great point there in that uh, to get business to come here, you have to have a cooperative effort between government, your tech schools, your public schools, and the people to set up the type of training program that a company might want or need to move in here. And we need to be able to adapt and, and do that quickly so that we can have trained personnel for a business of that new age uh, type of work to move in here. And uh, uh, like right now, I don't know, do we, you know, we have a chamber of commerce representing our business that's not in business or has no business experience on board. We have politicians who come out of politics to run for, they run for one office and another office, and and most of our politicians come out of government-related jobs when they run for office. Uh, so we're, uh, you know, and a lot of these people don't know how to coordinate all these departments to create an environment for business to move in here. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got a few businesses that are already here. I can think of at least one or two, uh, for instance. So. Been, been here for, been here off and on for over 30 years in the same spot. Pumping propane, doing repairs on containers, heaters. I don't want in the county that will do you a repair on your tanks if you need it. I sell propane gas, liquid propane, and, uh, and I've got plenty of competitors, and I can easily compete with them. That's grills, backup heat, substitute heat, grills, campers, motor homes, you name it, and, and if it comes in to that door, I can take care of it. I'm here Tuesday through Friday, April 5. Saturday, April 12. Take a call. Me at 562. 5-4-5-4 or 5... I mean, 5-4-4-4 or 5-4-4-4. Which one you want to use? 5-6-2-54-44. Yeah, or 5-6-2-5-4-5-4. Five, 
five four four four. Or as Mr. Hanson's written down here, five six two five four 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 four. That'll four, work four. too. <laughs> that will work too. Five six two five four four four. <laughs> That'll right, get it. Right in the middle of the road in Somerville Holler. Thank you, Digger. Just say five six two. Five and this finish you with fours. Huh? Yeah, that's it. Just keep it dialed in forward. You're now, getting bigger. Digger's also the kind of feller that hauls children to Cincinnati, doesn't charge them anything, doesn't get paid for it, paid, buys the gas out of his own pocket uh, to help uh, kids get the medical attention, the special type of medical attention they need up there. And he built up a special relationship with the Shriners when he was a kid and the doctor wouldn't saw his arm off and the Shriners took care of him. And since they let him keep his arm, he turned around yeah. and coming out alive. Well, yeah, so, he, yeah, he ended up being a, being a, a, a propane master, didn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think he saw some action as a military person. I think he did. Well, I don't know yes. about it. I think he was kind of between wars, but I know he served. Yeah. He, he did what they asked him to do. And what they asked him to do. The, uh, uh, getting back to this jobs thing and the the uh, the potential the county has, we have we're kind of disadvantaged a little bit of the topography or the lay of the land. We're a little bit rough on that part, but we still have a lot of property, a lot of land where that can be developed into industrial property. Uh, the valley is pretty much, it's not going to be industrial, I don't believe. Uh, because we got to we gotta save the valley, valley. we got to save the valley for trailers. Okay. You know, but even use trailer it won't parks. Perk. It won't perk. That's right. It won't perk. I'll tell you what now. You, you got a point on certain parts of it. No, no. You've got a point, okay. right? Drains uh, up into a rock. The, uh, the subgrade on the road going up 63 there, right where the People's Bank was. Mm -hmm. That subgrade. Is it not there now? The People's Bank? Yeah. Well, the building's there, but the business is there. Really? Not. Yeah. That's I right. guess so. Yeah. But the, this is the useless trivia, but the, the grade of the road. We have a lot of that around here. Yeah, you know, like useless The grade trivia. of the road. I won't yeah, the grade of the road. Road. Okay. What I was going to say is, you talk about Perkins. That road right there will never sink because when they cut the subgrade, they cut right to solid rock. Mm -hmm. And it just, the solid rock right there where the hump is. They'd like to have one of them rocks up on the mountain, wouldn't they? Yeah, wouldn't they? It would hurt to have one down there at the Eagle Market, <laughs> there in front of Eagle Market. The, uh, it would be good if we had a big business, but the com competition to get a big industry in here, you're going to have to compete against the whole country plus the world as a matter of fact because uh, when we get down to the wages and that type of thing we're at uh, pretty much of a disadvantage uh, and I've got my opinion of minimum wage I think the market should set the wage but right now I've been hearing estimates and I believe I picked this up out of the new sentinel that the living what you call the living wage in this area is about seventeen dollars an hour and to hire a person at seventeen dollars an hour to produce the what do we call the widget? Well, they're gonna that, have, you, you seventeen dollars just spending money you eat off of the Well, I don't know how they determine what's called a livable wage. Uh, they throw these words out here and, and I haven't bothered to find out I'd and like I think see, it's a bunch of I like to see how they arrived at that. I would too. I'd like to understand. Somebody may have just pulled it out of the hat. But, somewhere uh, else. Oh yeah, somewhere else. Uh, to be in business, I don't care if it's a factory or whatever, just like you was talking about a call center, I don't care what it is, anyone that's in business, whoever they employ has got, and it's just common sense, they have got to produce more <clears throat> than their employer is going to, they're going to have to produce in above what they're being paid. I mean, that's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. the, the working person out here has got to produce enough to pay all of the overhead, all of the taxes and everything that the government lays upon. And this is another thing that employees don't stop to think about and don't believe. Every time a factory out here or a business is taxes go up or anything goes up on them, that means that employer or employee has got to produce that much more. 
I'm supposed to mention, before I forget it, that uh, Channel 12 is having a benefit for Shirley Miller's family at 7, Channel 12 right here. Uh, she's been having a hard time, a lot of family sickness and whatnot. If you happen to want to tune in at uh, 7 o'clock this evening at Channel 12, our sister station, that's what they call it. Anyway, uh, I told her I'd mention it, so I've done it. Uh, if anyone out there <clears throat> would have any good suggestions that counters, especially what I'm saying, if well, those I'm people, people you, huh? well, if, if you got some other something, if I'm not telling this like it is, I wish somebody would tell me. Uh, I've been call, in business for so many five, years. Five, six, two. Five three three seven three five five seven three five five six two three five five seven five six six fourteen fifty. Yeah, well, gentlemen, there, there's all sorts of aspects of things that we can look at this, and we can lay the blame on anything we want to. Uh, but the economy, and I think the whole world economy, is getting tighter and tighter. Uh, we're having to compete with the world, and that's on. Anything we make, and we tend to say China because China's name on, is on a lot, I'd say the majority of the things that come to us, used to be Japan and Taiwan. Uh, but that tells you something. I mean, the companies go to wherever they can make a profit for their stockholders, and that's what they're going to do. Uh, there's, of course, there's a thousand other things we can discuss, but I guess really when you come right down to it, Jobs is one of the, the very important things, and a living wage is kind of where they come up with this 17 plus per hour. Uh, it's easy to jerk these numbers out, but try to get someone that will. This the listeners out there. Is there anyone out there that'll hire somebody for 17 plus an hour, plus do all the paperwork, their workman's comp, everything else that that's required to employ someone, will anyone do that? What's I mean, the minimum step wage after? now? The way the minimum wage, minimum I wage believe, here. is seven something. I believe it's seven twenty-five or a little above. So you're right. saying a livable, the minimum wage don't even bring you up to a livable wage. I don't know who made that number up, but it's hard to, you can't hire anybody that, well, it's hard to find anybody that will actually work for minimum wage. You, you, if you're looking to hire somebody, if you actually need something done, you already need to shoot higher than that. In this area, and we're we're kind of a depressed place, this minimum wage thing, raising the minimum wage, all you're doing is just making it harder on untrained people to start out. I just had, had a thought. Here, here's something to think about. Minimum wage is seven and a quarter an hour. But yet a thief will go out here and steal stuff for probably less than minimum wage. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, but he gets a free meal and somewhere to sleep every now and then. Just for uh, their Three bucks and a cot. Yeah, okay. but this is really makes bail, yeah. Well, when he gets a free lodger and gets out. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, free lodgers are usually well the worst, too. I mean, where's every penny? Well, I think that our government local, national, and all, has just about put the little man out. If that's the bottom line, he's just about put him out with the paperwork, the taxes, and regulations. And, you know, right now, I don't think that you can legally let your young and teenager or whatever, and I'm talking about legally, even mow the yard, because he's running a piece of dangerous equipment oh, or something like that. Government is uh, running everything. Legal. Uh, RL, government interference at every level of everything we do is destroying and ruining everything. You know, like for instance, shutting down these wood stoves out in the Midwest. I mean, 80 or 85% of the people out there heat their homes with wood stoves. What is our government trying to do to people in this country? It's horrifying. Or well, they want people to freeze. You know, they have some really cold winters out there. Well, you yeah. have some really deep snows. And they want to shut down their main source of heat. 
I sometimes think about how uh, <clears throat> they do a survey ever so often on homeless people, how many homeless people there is in the county. This is a big thing. But do they ever do any research on what causes them to be well, homeless? Uh, what drives them into homelessness? There, there's a whole lot of things out there. They will come on, they will tell you what's considered a homeless person. What do you think a homeless person is? Well, According somebody, to the criteria, criteria. Somebody sleeps on a park bench. Is that right? Yeah, they fill out a form and uh, if the last night they spent was let, filled in as park let, bench, let, let's, then they're considered homeless. There ain't that many park benches in this town. I know okay. that ain't right. But there's <laughs> hundreds of homeless people. According to what's, what's called homeless or what's uh, the legal terminology for homeless, but see, the thing of it is, if you can get enough, if you can legally count enough homeless people, you can get a grant. You can get money. But it's Not the government. Only. Yeah, so the, basically they're making it advantageous to have homeless people. Right. The, I see, really, government interference uh, creates well, homelessness. Okay. And then the city see they get these grants, so they encourage homelessness. They encourage the government to create more homelessness. Well, I have it's an, a vicious cycle. I had an idea. Whenever they go to do this count, they run a little advertisement paper if you want to volunteer to count homeless. And if there's anybody out there that has been there, I want them to call and tell us what the, re what the requirements are to be considered homeless. Yeah, one of you but, great government working bureaucrats out there, call in and tell us what yeah. homeless, the definition of homelessness. Yeah, you know, they have a big the 20, criteria. 24 hour push. Uh, the local mayors and Everybody that wants to volunteer and get on it does this. But what I'm, I'm going to make a joke about it, okay? Uh, this is not what, but Knoxville, see, they send buses out and truck them in, see, so they can meet their quota. You so know, why don't we do Bloomberg sent some bailing buses out of one way tickets. Well, they, they handle homeless people like they do voters. Well, so they bus in. Like, have to see, they don't have to be rich, you see. <laughs> but if we can truck in. Well, enough, I don't know. They, if they're going to count them as a quota, they're, they're registering them somewhere. If we could bus in enough, see, we could get to where we could get that money. See, and then bus them exactly, back out if you yeah. don't count them. they has got to be here <clears> one day. But, you know, tell them if they hang around too long, they'll be picked up for vacancy. If you have, if you don't own a home, Let's say that you have a relative that is uh, homebound or whatever, you know, and that relative moves in with you. That relative is considered to be homeless. There you go. All right. Hey, uh, uh, speaking of homeless, uh, I uh, was informed of a, uh, a revelation this week, and I would like to uh, announce this uh, on uh, our show. If it's okay with you, Ron. It appears, it appears that, uh, you know, we have four people running for election out of the district attorney's office. And uh, only one has been deemed uh, disruptive enough to be fired. <laughs> okay. Now, and... My answer to that well, is... Well, only one of the mayoral candidates was deemed too disruptive to remain in position too. There you go. But anyway, uh, it turns out that the person who was hired to replace Jared Effler was hired before he was fired. So the phone calls well, and the agreement all basic, for employment... You know was all taken care of before he was called in and fired. Well, so have, how's that for premeditation? You've got to you know, right, Mr. Cover things. If premeditation makes murder worse, I think premeditation makes being fired a lot worse. <laughs> I just think it shows good planning. <laughs> it shows that we need a, a new person in charge of our district attorney. It's been under the Phillips family now for three decades in a lustrum, and we need a change of personality and integrity in that office. Integrity. That, what do you call all these words? That, that's right on there with ethics, isn't it? Yeah, it's right in there with ethics, morals, that's ethics. Right, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, ethics. Yeah, ethics. We've been suffering ethics for five times. Ethics and ethics occur. <laughs> if, if, at one time, I think, didn't uh, 
Henry Ford had a son named Ethics, and they made his name, and then they named the car. Well, you're confusing that with Essex. Uh, <laughs> Essex. 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 Yeah. Gentlemen, <laughs> there is something that people need to be aware of, and that's this open carry uh, bill that's in the state right now. Oh, I'm in favor of that. Okay. I think mean, it's already gone to the governor for no, safety. No, no, it hasn't. It hasn't? No. Oh, okay. Uh, the uh, state senate, house, or whatever, plans to go on their break Tuesday. The gentleman, one of them, somehow that's put this up, it's kind of got stuck in some kind of a committee. And he's introduced, uh, I don't think it would be a bill, but uh, whatever it is, to move this thing up to where the House can vote on it Monday before they go on recess or their vacation on Tuesday to get it through. If not, it's going to have to wait and you know how all this waiting stuff goes in the money swaps hands and you name the whole thing. But if they, this guy is wanting to try to get it voted on Monday. Well, you know, a guy, I had a conversation with somebody yesterday and, and he was a little bit worried, although he was Second Amendment uh, supporter, he was a little worried that that might kind of open things up, you know, the hot heads shooting each other. But if I'm not mistaken, Kentucky has got to open carry without permit already. And I don't see a lot of people leaking over the border being shot. Well, they use the exact same argument against concealed carry yeah, laws. Oh, well, everybody be shooting each other in the street every time there's a fender bender, two, three people will get I shot. Think, I like the fact <laughs> that we do have a license to conceal carry. We put a damper on any um, run of muck uh, open carry people because they wouldn't know that guy over there didn't have one in his pocket. Exactly. But I think it would look great to have people carrying their uh, 45s on their hip into Walmart. Uh, it would sure discourage... Yeah, uh, you got any bullets for this, buddy? It would discourage any Democrat coming in there and trying to shoot everybody. And what I mean by that is every mass murderer we've had here in America in the last 20 or 25 years have been registered Democrats. Even the children came from homes of registered Democrats. You don't want to leave out the Unabomber who happened to be an Al Gore supporter. He was a big Al Gore supporter. His favorite book was Earth in the Balance by Al Gore. I tell you what we got to do. we got to tell these people about something else here. Just to well, I was going to tell you, when you recommended states, yeah. there's 28 states now that have this uh, our variation of it, of open the open carry. carry. 28 states. And Florida... Florida had a, a real strict gun law back many, many years ago, mm -hmm. and it was teetotally. They couldn't keep up with the crime. It was going crazy. And then they passed their, uh, I don't know whether it was the stand your ground or whatever, but anyhow, they allowed the citizens to go armed. And, and sure they, they, was, they was open on, I mean, not concealed. Open carry. Yeah, and it their, their crime rate... Went pretty, way down. Pretty soon they had all the food shot. Well, well, Bill Clinton passed the assault rifle ban back in 1993, 1994. Violent crime went up 20% all across America. We got something here. I can get it to work. There's the article on that. Well, we have been in the here for 75 years. We uh, have had 40 years of experience in ambulance service. We have a Class A ambulance service. Almost 22 employees. 22 employees that we pay for all over the world. And how much taxpayer money goes into this operation? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. We do a lot of, we do all kinds of ambulance service. We're very great in the states of the Class A service. We can haul any kind of patients. We go anywhere. We uh, do a lot of our emergency transports. Nursing home, hospitals, doctor's offices. We, we go anywhere that patients want to go. We appreciate the opportunity to serve each and every one of our patients. Anybody, any kind of insurance you have, we're qualified to take it. If you need medical transport, I can have you. And call the company that does not require, require taxpayer money. They, they, Either please you or they go out of business. Call Vital Care at 562 9370. If you can't remember that, just call 911 and tell them you want Vital Care. Work, work every time. What do you got there, Mr. Hitson? Gentlemen, in this article, and this is 
in today's paper, and it has to do with this open carry thing. But anyhow, uh, the United States Supreme Court ruled in its 1943 Murdoch versus Pennsylvania case that no state shall convert a liberty into a privilege, license it, and attach a fee to it. Now, if I'm not mistaken, where this bill here, this Tennessee bill is tied up right now, is in the Finance Committee. And the reason being, because there's so much money being brought in that it would affect the, our amount of revenue. Hmm. This, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Is By, that just a block in action, or is that? Well, it's it's that, but it's, well, I don't know. But anyhow, it, it had to go through the finance. And what they're trying to, what this. Well, it sounds to me like Tennessee's already violating this precedent. They are violating it. By uh, charging a fee and licensing uh, concealed carry. Gentlemen, they have turned the liberty into a privilege, which is a privilege to take money from the citizenry. Okay, as a liberty, this is given to us by the Constitution. The Constitution, that's the Second Amendment. The First Amendment gives us the right to do what we're doing sitting right here. No, well, wait a minute. It's not as, it's not as solid as the Second Amendment. That says they the First Amendment says that Congress shall make no laws to, and, and, they, and they have, it, it, that's right, it's not, I mean, but the they Supreme have, Court it, has always interpreted that, that no state or local government can abridge their freedom of speech. I agree with you, my point is that the Second Amendment don't leave it out, it is firm, it says that that's right. rights You're shall correct. not be infringed. Okay. Don't, don't you don't need an interpretation for okay. it. I don't okay. think so. The, the First Amendment, if you read it through, I believe it says that your right to freedom of speech, uh, right to free assemble peaceably, mm -hmm. and a couple others shall not be abridged. There's no. five, that's that not, right? there's right. five that right? liberties in the First Amendment that says Congress will not. Bridge it starts. Or Congress shall, shall make, no law make no law to just do what okay. you said. The Second Amendment don't mention any governing body whatsoever. It says the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Can you name, name the five liberties listed? Speech, yeah. assembly, uh, press, religion, and uh, what did I leave out? Press, assembly. Speech, sp speech press, assembly, uh, shoot. Okay, you got the freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly, uh, press. press, and red, 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 red press, right of petition. Right of petition. Mm -hmm. right petition. Yeah. Okay. Now, we do not have a right of petition here in Tennessee. I have a question then. Because we should be able to recall people who are in office through. Uh, redress by no, he, passing around a I petition. Think talk to our state rep and see if we can get one of them. Oh, he won't touch it with a ten foot. Oh, pole. but I think we ought to get one of them our uh, ability to uh, secede or become unannexed and stuff too. Oh, we need to talk to the fellow down in Ottawa. He's the one that's putting a limit on annexation. Uh, we need to get that. him to put one out there where we can succeed. The last. The last account I had on that, that was on the mayor's desk. That was to be signed. On the governor's desk. Yes. There's another one on the governor's desk I'd like to mention. Uh, uh, Van Huss. Uh, he's a representative from uh, Johnson City. Uh, he got uh, a bill on the governor's desk that has not been signed yet to prevent agents from the United Nations yeah. coming to Tennessee to monitor our elections. Did you know our last election, they sent a man from France and a man from Armenia? Where in the heck is Armenia? To That's come, where they write the International Property Maintenance Code. <laughs> to come here and monitor elections in Tennessee. I wasn't aware was of that. Was that two years ago or four years ago? It was, uh, it was the last, last presidential election. That would have been uh, two years ago. Yeah, it's because well, we had uh, yeah. uh, required photo ID. Yeah. Okay. Then. And so, uh, Governor, uh, I know you're listening. Get your butt in your seat. <laughs> yeah. And sign that thing. We don't want. We don't put. And next thing you know, they'll be sending Libyans over here. Or yeah. Afghanistaners. You, you, you know. Taliban will be monitoring our elections. We we talk about how great 
Americans are in their innovation or whatever. And we make the lousiest ink pens they ever was because the president, he he got an ink pen that won't write but one letter at a time. He has to change to get another one. He can't sign his name with one ink pen. It won't last yeah, long. He's got a pencil and he's got a phone and he'll do whatever he wants to do. Well, if he if he can only put down one letter, but there's also that's another subject that's in the paper today about this voter thing. But anyhow, let me get back to what, what you said about the First Amendment or stated there. If, uh, are you saying that Congress cannot make a law to abridge the First Amendment? That's but, the way it starts out. But can local government do that? Because According to the First Amendment, only Congress cannot pass the law to so, abridge. But the Supreme Court has always interpreted that now, wait a minute. to mean that no local government can Most, do. most state governments repeat that on the state level. So okay. you're, you're covered, and probably, I don't know for sure, I think that the state of Tennessee just duplicates that same right. But uh, they're not forced by federal law to do that. Okay. Hypothetically speaking, then, the county down here and one of our... Uh, That's correct. One, one of our... If it's not in violation of, of the state constitution. One of our great politicians has got the idea of taxing uh, signs. Could he, oh. could he not come up also with a resolution to where that we could charge a fee for anybody that goes to church or peacefully assembles or whatever? Uh, 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 this is you, Cliff Jennings. <laughs> we, we want to honor your great idea to, to tax our signs by the square inch. By the way, signs, let, signs, let, 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 let me read you something. Okay. Well, I always like that written reading. The First Amendment to the Constitution says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the exercise thereof, free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peacefully to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. That's it. It don't say somebody else can or can't. That's the end of it right there. The Second Amendment says a well-regulated militia be necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, period. That's it. It ain't like Obama's period at the end of the sentence. It means that and then that. Go down and read number 10. I think number 10 is one of the most powerful amendments of the Constitution which is conveniently ignored by every branch of government out there. That's right. It says the power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited it by, the, by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. That's right. So Social Security is illegal. Every government project up there that is not specifically listed in the Constitution is illegal. And did you know there's only three federal crimes listed in the Constitution? Treason, tax evasion, <laughs> counterfeiting, because okay. Congress spends money, so they outlawed counterfeiting, treason, and piracy. That, does that include them our jeans that those ladies wear? Is where they've been counterfeited? Now here's uh, something else. You know, the Ninth Amendment is not something to be sneaked at. True. It exactly. says that the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. That means that federal government, all government, only has the power that the people have ceded to them. That's like the County them. Powers Act. Oh, yeah. Has all kinds of illegal clauses in it, like restricting a calling. Like a fine upstanding young man, I think you do. So I took off my headset, imagine that clock, me working for you.
Mike. Seems like most of the Dem no, they wouldn't. A lot of the Democrats voted for this. Sure did. Didn't. didn't cost them nothing. They might have got yeah. a lot of it. Might have cost them you know, against it. The Democrat Party better wake up. You know, the Southern Democrat Party used to be a great party, but they have let the leftist progressives in uh, Washington D.C. and places dictate liberalism and progressivism <laughs> to the point of being berated. To where they, you know, they can't, uh... Yeah. We don't know what that song was, but we didn't incorporate that into the show intentionally, so if we've been printed on somebody's copyright, this Sir yeah. Jerry Kidd, that's K-I-B-D. I have a, uh, 800 number that's only a couple digits away from, uh, <laughs> uh, Deer Kill. Yeah. Deer, Big Game Kills in North Carolina. Yep. Yeah where they're supposed to report their kills. So I get an awful lot of deer kill reports on my phone. I've got a guy. You know, know they, can, they can shoot straight, but they can't get their numbers right on a keyboard. I've got a guy that his number is local FBI, the Knoxville office of the FBI. He <laughs> gets a lot of calls. He don't know how to handle If you got the wrong area code. Fellas, we're running short on time, aren't we? Yeah, we're getting about there. I'll uh, tell you, we, uh, we, you know, we're getting a lot of listeners out there. I uh, met some people up in Kentucky that uh, were real proud to listen to our show and and spoke high, in a very high regards of it. I've met people in Georgia who are listening. I want to say hi to the folks in Florida that are listening to us. Uh, we're just, uh, I think our base is growing. And... Uh, uh, we have more people listen to it than will openly or publicly admit they listen. Oh, gentlemen, we need for every one of our politicians that's running for office to defend the positions that have they have taken in the past. We're calling an old, old commissioner to sign a pledge one way or the other to straighten their attention. That's it. We're off. Well, at least you got that in there. We're still on the internet. Yeah. Hey, folks. The, uh, there's, everybody is officially in that's going to be in except for writings. And it's time for them to start giving their positions and defending the positions that they have taken in the past. You know, the deadline on the right end is June, June the 16th or 18th. June 18th. And noon on June 18th. So we need to check with these commissioners. Come on in. And if people are not going to uh, uh, sign our pledge, we need to get write-in candidates against them. Oh, okay. I don't, don't want to do it. I'm going to write in. I don't think I'm going to write off. I'm going to write off. Hey. 